Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net and in this lesson I want to talk about a challenge you're going to run into if you attempt to uh, to use the Visual State Manager and Adaptive Triggers to resize items inside of your data template uh, for your grid view, list view control, anything that needs an item template. Uh, so you can see here that I have another version of my little uh, contact manager application and ideally what would happen is whenever we have more screen real estate those avatar images would grow larger and I've tried a few things but it can't quite get it to work right now you see they're just they stay the same size no matter what now if you take a look at the code that I've actually written here you can see that I've added a visual state manager with visual state groups I've got two visual states a narrow and a wide layout when we're in the uh, narrow layout I want the avatar images width and height to be 100 and when it, we're in the wide layout I want the width and height to be 200 so why isn't this working well unfortunately this will not work using the technique that we've that we've used here where we're defining that data template here in line. What I'm going to need to do is actually break out this stack panel that forms the body of my data template into its own code file. And then I can, inside of that code file, I can use a visual state manager and adapter triggers and all that good stuff to, to resize uh, on demand. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do in this lesson. And so to begin with, I'm going to need to add a new user control to my project. And a user control is just like a page. It's just smaller. It can be reused multiple times. Uh, it usually just has a snippet as opposed to an entire page layout. So in this case, I'm going to add a new item. And uh, in the Add New Item dialog, I'm going to make sure to choose User Control. And I'm going to give it the name uh, Contact Template, because that's what I'm using it for, a template for individual contacts. Great. Let me go ahead and just get to that point right there. And now what I want to do is come back over here and in my in my main page .xaml, I'm going to just rip out everything right there between the open and closed data template and I'm going to go to the new contact template page and I'm going to get rid of the grid and just paste in that stack same stack panel there, okay? So we're off to a great start. What I'm going to need to do to reference that user control now is inside of my data template. I'm going to need to reference the local namespace. Local, as defined earlier, will just be the local namespace, whatever the project name is. User control data template, as long as your, your user control is in the same root directory as everything else in your project, you'll be just fine. If you want to put it in a subfolder, you're going to need to reference a different namespace up in your XAML header. All right, so here we go. Contact template. Uh, and um, I'm not sure that I need to do this, but I am going to just set horizontal alignment equal to stretch and vertical alignment to stretch. Just say, hey, take up every, everything you give me as far as the space is concerned. Okay. And that's all that I should need to do there. Great. Now back in the contact template, if we were to try to run the application right now, it wouldn't work. It might even give us errors. There's a couple of changes that we're going to need to make first. Uh, first of all, let's try to get this all running and then we'll come back and add the visual state manager and the, uh, the different adaptive triggers. So uh, the first thing that I want to do is actually um, use the name of the object that we're going to be binding to. So in this case, we're going to do contact dot avatar path, contact dot first name, contact dot last name. Okay? And then in the code behind for this contact template, I'm going to need to add two different things. The first thing that I'm going to need to add is I'm going to need to make a, uh, a, uh, a property. So I'm going to go models.contact, just the models. I could define that uh, in a using statement, but essentially uh, I'm just going to reference it like this. Models contact. Uh, and then we want to expose a new property called contact for our user control. And we're just going to add a getter. So this is just the getter of a full-blown property uh, definition. So we're going to return this dot data context as models.contact. All right. And so essentially what this is going to do is whenever you are uh, 
whenever one of the controls on the contact template.xaml page, whenever it needs to get data, it's going to get data of type contact and it's going to get that data from the data context for this user control. The data context for the user control will be passed in from the main page.xaml. It will be whatever gets, you know, basically passed in in the data template. Okay. So for the most part, what you can do with this is just treat this as templated code. Copy and paste it. We're going to add it to our cheat sheet. You don't need to really understand too much about what it's doing. Just understand that you have to have this line of code and then also in this constructor for our user control we're going to have to do one more thing and that is whenever the data context is changed there will be a data context change event and what we want to happen is write this lambda expression that will call the bindings.update now this update is actually being generated for us again uh, inside uh, because we use the xbind statement like we talked about previously, uh, this will essentially say, hey, go off and update the data that you're being bound to. All right. Again, this can be treated as boilerplate code as well. We're going to add it to our cheat sheet. You don't have to understand too much about how it works in order to use it. I think that's the key idea here. But now that we've added these two lines of code and we've made the modification to our xbind statement for each of the items that we're binding to here by adding the actual data type for the given property. Now we should be able to at least see it working again even though we've made no significant changes to the functionality. We'll get to that next. Okay, so it still works. We're still binding to our same uh, observable collection. We're just defining that data template here in a user control. Now we want to take it to the next step and that is to define a visual state manager so that whenever we resize the window that um, the image, uh, the uh, that image, that avatar image will grow from 100, 100 to 200, 200. And so I'm just going to actually paste in a bunch of code here. It's this, pretty much the same code that we had that I, well let me look here. Yeah, let me just actually do this. I'll just grab it from here. Grab all that. I'm going to hit Control X to get it out of my main page.xaml, and I'm going to take it over here to the contact template.xaml and put it right here underneath the stack panel, like so. All right, let's see if that works. All right, so this should be pretty small. What happens when we make it larger? Oh, hey, it doubled the size of our avatar icon. All right, very proud of this. So we're going to use this technique for our upcoming challenge. Whenever we want to resize the window, not only we're we going to resize maybe or change the layout, but we may want to resize the actual um, data template for our grid view control. Since we'll be working in a larger form factor, we would want to make it possible for the fonts and the images to be larger on a larger screen, okay? So that's all that I wanted to say about this. This addresses the issue of how do I use the Visual State Manager and Adaptive Triggers inside of a data template? Well, you add a user control, you make a few tiny modifications in the code behind, and then you go ahead and you add your Visual State Manager state triggers and um, your setters, and uh, they'll be applied to each item in your collection. So just to prove that this works, let's go ahead and add Beth as well. And you can see she's large, and now she is small. Great. Okay. Uh, so I think that's pretty much all we're going to cover in this little round, and now it's time for Cheat Sheet Review, and then move on to our next challenge. See you there. Thanks.